Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Dishing Up Nutrition series, where I will help to demystify the plant-based diet. My name is Valerie Williams. I am a clinical dietitian for American Oncology Network, and thank you for joining us today. All right. So what do you think of when you hear plant-based diet? many different things. And you can see here, there are a lot of memes about a plant-based diet. Um, and what you can think is French fries are part of the plant-based diet or a impossible Whopper. Or do you think of it as just a big salad, a block of tofu, grass? Um, what, I, what I think is really funny is this picture of the lobsters um, that are made from carrots. I um, mean, people saying, oh, it tasted just like lobster. Um, or do you think of it how it really is? A diet with a plate filled with fruits and vegetables, um, as well as a little bit of protein, either from plant-based proteins or animal proteins, like this colorful plate in the corner. Well, today we'll help you to determine what is a plant-based diet and what does it mean for you? Because one size does not fit all. So a plant-based diet is a diet or really more of a lifestyle that focuses on foods primarily from plants. Um, so choosing more foods from plant sources, and we'll talk about what that long, luckily, list of those foods is. It does not necessarily mean never eating meat or dairy or following even a vegetarian or vegan diet. And I think that's often a misconception as people think plant-based means all plants nothing else. And that doesn't have to mean that. And that may make you think, hey, maybe a plant-based diet can fit into my life if it's not all or nothing. Um, it's often implemented by limiting your animal protein. So that's your meat, chicken, fish, seafood, pork, beef, lamb, eggs, um, and your dairy foods to a third of your plate and filling up two thirds of the plate with plant foods. Um, so that's the easy way to think of it. And I think really the user friendly version of the plant based diet. Um, and so some, we'll be talking about how to work toward that moving forward. What are plant foods? What does that mean? Um, is it just fruits and vegetables? Luckily, plant foods is a wider range of foods. It includes fruits and vegetables, all fruits and all vegetables. I often get asked, well, what are the best fruits and vegetables? You know, they all bring benefits to the table. And really, it, those groups are not one where I like to parse out your best. Um, also, whole grains or grains in general, with the increased focus on whole grains. So things like whole wheat bread, um, whole grain cereals, whole grains like brown rice, quinoa, um, barley, all fit into your whole grain category. And your beans, all the beans, any beans that you like fit into the bean category. Um, seeds, nuts, and nut butters, healthy fats, plant-based milks, and plant-based proteins like your meat substitutes. And we're going to talk about those a little more later and give you a more detailed list of these options. Why all the hype? Plant-based is everywhere. It's at McDonald's. It's at Burger King. Um, every menu has an impossible burger on it. And my husband even gets soy chorizo from Chipotle. I almost fell over when he told me he got that because he is not an adventurous eater. But it's everywhere. Why? Well, one, once they get a concept people like, of course, they're going to use it. But the plant-based diet has a lot of benefits. One is there's benefits of the vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, or what's a fancy word for plant chemicals, and antioxidants that come in plant foods. They help to support the immune system and reduce inflammation. Uh, many of these chemicals only come in plant foods. And so if you don't eat many plant foods, you'll be missing them. Um, a plant-based diet also helps to maintain a healthy weight. Plant foods, especially fruits and vegetables, are lower in calorie, higher in fiber, and more filling. Um, therefore, 
they often fill people up and don't require as many calories to fill them up. And so that can help with maintaining a healthy weight. They also promote adequate fiber intake. And we know that fiber is beneficial um, for cancer prevention and also for bowel regulation. So two very important things in my world, pooping and preventing cancer. Um, and then you also have um, reducing the risk for cancer, heart disease, stroke, and diabetes for very um, significant and common comorbidities. Plant foods also, if you're a tree hugger or you're here to help the environment, which we all are um, for the planet that we live on, plant foods often have a less negative impact on the environment or a lower carbon footprint as Susie talked about in our last um, webinar. And so it can both help you and the planet two for one. Um, how do you move toward a plant-based diet? Just like any diet that you may wanna try, um, it can be hard to get started and hard to know where to start and to develop changes that are um, achievable and maintainable. So this is a list of, of where to start in moving toward a plant-based diet. And we're gonna go through these um, in a little more detail. So one is to, with any change that you're making, lifestyle change, change at work, change in your diet, you wanna start with small measurable changes. One easy place to start is to cook a meat-free meal at least one time a day. And if you wanna put in the chat and let me know if you've ever heard of Meatless Mondays. Meatless Mondays have been a campaign um, to encourage people to embrace a plant-based diet um, and to embrace it in an easy way. And so Meatless Mondays encourage you to make a meal on Mondays, but the police will not come if you do it on another day that is meat free. What's great about this is you can get the whole family involved in picking out the recipe for the week um, and preparing it and adding new foods in. So trying a new meat free food or a new vegetable or a new bean um, or some tofu every week for for meatless meal of the week. And you're thinking, lady, Mondays, I don't even want to get up, let alone cook. But you can consider some easy meals for meatless Mondays. Tofu and vegetable stir fry. Stir fries are a great place to start. They're very familiar for a lot of people, a great way to get in vegetables. And then you can just swap in a plant-based protein for your meat that you would typically put in there. Or do a little bit of meat and a little bit of of tofu if you're if you're easing into the meat free. Also falafel is another great way or a chickpea fritter basically. Um, you can get them frozen and heat them up in the oven. You can get mixes um, to make them so they're pretty simple to prepare. You can put it in a pita with some Greek salad um, and some tzatziki or a cucumber yogurt sauce which makes anything taste good um, and have a great dinner. If you're, you know, you need easy, easy, you could make veggie pizzas or flatbread with pre-made pizza crust, um, cheese sauce and veggies of everybody's choice alongside a salad. Hummus and veggie wraps are an easy place to start. Lentil or any kind of bean soups, bean and cheese burritos. Mexican food can be made plant-based pretty easily. And those are a great place to start. And then your good old pasta marinara. Um, so if you think you can't do meat-free, I think those are a great list of easy options to start with your um, Meatless Monday starting next week. Also look for easy options. We all know that there's some nights where you're not cooking. Believe me, I try to pass off cheese and crackers to my husband as dinner on a, the regular basis. So don't be afraid to try things like a frozen burrito or pasta bowls, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's plant, that is plant-based. That's as basic plant-based as you get. Um, a frozen pizza made with cauliflower crust, very popular these days. Um, vote, vegan pasta bolognese sauce. Um, at Trader Joe's, they make one. You just heat it, pour it over some pasta and eat. Canned bean soups or even frozen macaroni and cheese are easy meals to move you in the plant-based direction. So don't knock the freezer options. My slides are just a little slow moving here. One second. Right. So now you're going to think about 
a meat-free meal a week. And then you can build on that, maybe doing it two times a week or making your lunches meat-free, picking where you can start. Um, but now you want to revamp your plate because if you take the meat out, you don't want to be left with a void because then you'll feel deprived. So you want to rethink your plate to build it to be more plant forward or plant friendly. At lunch and dinner, fill half of your plate with vegetables. This is the easy place to start. And um, vegetables at breakfast can be more of a challenge. So really focusing on starting this at lunch and dinner. So take your plate and put half of vegetables on there. It could be all the same vegetable. It could be a variety. It could be cooked. It could be a salad. Um, I like to do like a crudite, which is a fancy word for like vegetables and dip. Um, so whatever works for you, kind of fill that up or use a variety of those options. Include a variety of types and colors to maximize the nutrients. Every color in fruits and vegetables brings with it different beneficial nutrients. So really mixing up the colors. Also, vegetables can get old. You're like, oh, this cauliflower again. Vary the preparations and flavors to keep eating interesting. I like to mix up sauces to um, pour over or dip my vegetables in to really keep me wanting to eat them because I'm doing it for the sauce. Um, so like a peanut sauce with ginger is a great option. I make a great tahini and lemon sauce um, that, it, that makes me want to eat vegetables or grabbing a low fat ranch dip to dip your raw vegetables in just to, to make it more interesting. Um, you also want to eat lots of vegetables. Think of vegetables, how you can fold them into everything that you eat. Can you add them as a snack? Um, can you add them to eggs in the morning? A veggie egg scramble, a veggie omelet, um, salsa on top of your eggs, or can you throw a handful of spinach in your smoothie at breakfast, or even a little bit of cooked carrots if you have a good blender um, to get some veggies in. And a lot of times if you add them in moderation, you actually don't taste them, but they're adding that veggie goodness in there. Um, also consider salads and raw vegetables as easy options. Salads you can have in your crisper drawer and um, have some good dressings and just throw that together quickly for that part of your plate. Um, raw veggies that are ready to eat are also very helpful. Um, Additionally, roast a variety of vegetables on the weekend and eat throughout the week. I do this a lot. Um, I will roast multiple pans of vegetables. My favorites are cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and carrots. And I will just add them to my plates throughout the week, which is nice if you're more plant-based than the people that you eat with. Um, that way you have what you need and it's easy to access and you don't have to make it every night. Also, another thing to consider if you watch our other videos is um, last month I made a beet dip that would be great to go with, um, with raw vegetables. So if you need a recipe, check me out on making that beet dip. Also, you need to look at animal proteins differently. So you're going to fill up your plate with vegetables, but you may still want to eat animal proteins. And what's great about a plant-based diet is it doesn't mean no meat or no animal products. You want to, though, change your meat from being the thought process of it being the center of your plate or a majority of your plate to it being more like a side dish or a garnish. And so ideally, we like you to keep your animal proteins to one quarter to one third of your plate. Um, so if you're building a plate, it would be half vegetables, a quarter starch and a quarter protein. And you can see in these sample plates that um, that is being made in different ways. At the top, you have a like a grain bowl that has um, either chicken or tofu, pick your poison, um, a small amount. And then half of that plate is coming from that veggie stir fry and that cabbage. And then underneath, you can see some quinoa peeking through as the other quarter of the plate. Um, and then the lower plate is a little more obvious with your veggies. And then you have your small portion or your quarter portion of chicken. Um, and then you have some mixed whole grains there. And so just to show you how it can be done, and both of these plates, I wouldn't sneeze at them if they came in front of me. They look delicious. Um, if you are eating animal proteins, you want to consider lean proteins and limiting your processed meats like hot dogs, bacon, sausage, and ham. And try to choose 
a couple times a week, if you like fish, choose a, a fatty fish like salmon or tuna, as it will give you some heart healthy and inf inflammation busting omega-3 fatty acids. Um, so you can bring protein in the mix. You just want to pick wisely. And again, keep it to your side dish or your garnish. Additionally, to um, reinforce the plant-based diet, you want to try to include whole grains. And this is especially easy at breakfast. Breakfast can be challenging for vegetables, um, but can be a great place to do your fruit and your whole grains. So consider things like oatmeal, stone ground grits. Yes, they are whole grain and or quinoa at breakfast. Um, and you can make them savory or sweet. So you can see here there's, um, it looks like a little cheesy grits, but it could be regular grits with um, an egg on top as a great breakfast. And the protein and fiber from the whole grains will really keep you going. You can also consider um, choosing whole grain breads and bagels and other breakfast breads that you may consume to get that extra fiber as well. Um, and then make sure that you're um, incorporating some fruit into your breakfast. So you can see here we have oatmeal on the bottom topped with fruit and nuts and a little chocolate chips. Um, and then there's an acai or smoothie bowl above topped with fruit and a little bit of granola. So some really easy breakfast options and things like the acai bowl, you can even get them at certain, there's certain like grab and go places that make these and Trader Joe's even makes a frozen one. And I'm sure other places do too. Um, so some easy options, cause I'm all about easy. I'm not trying to spend a lot of time with cooking. Um, also, you want to choose healthy fats. They will help you to stay satisfied and enhance the flavor of your food. So there's no need to eliminate fat. It actually will help you to feel more satisfied. And then lastly, eat fruit as a dessert or a snack. We're trying to get you know, two to three servings of fruit in each day. Um, and and doing it through snacks or dessert is an easy way to increase your intake. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting a pear to replace a piece of chocolate cake. But if you tend to have that sweet tooth often, trying to do some fruit can be helpful so you're not, you know, eating cake after every meal. I want you to focus as you move into a plant-based diet on options, not limitations. Oftentimes, people will say, well, what can't I eat? That sets it up for negative. You already feel deprived if you have a list of things that you're not supposed to eat. What do you want to do? You want to eat all the things on that list. You want to eat the ribs and the wings and everything that's on that list. So let's focus on what you can do and what your options are and what you should increase. And so this is the list we saw at the beginning. It's just shortened or it's just expanded for more options for your use. Um, and you can see that there are tons of options available to you. Now that you know what a plant-based diet is and how to start building in those principles, we have three frequently asked questions um, about the plant-based diet. And so I wanted to bring these up because you're probably thinking them or when you go home and tell your family about watching this, you'll say, well, I, I wonder about this. Or they'll say, well, what about that? So I wanted to get these questions out in the open. The first question is, can I meet my protein needs through a plant-based diet? And the answer is yes, it is possible. It may require some planning. In this country, most people, especially people who don't have any underlying medical conditions, tend to eat more than enough protein. We actually eat 1.5 times more protein than we need um, while we follow a traditional diet. Plant-based high protein foods are available. Um, it includes things like beans, seeds, nuts, and nut butter, so peanut butter and almond butter, um, tofu, tempeh, satan, edamame, soy milk. Um, the, many plant-based foods are high in protein. Vegetables and grains also provide protein in smaller amounts. So many of the foods you would consume on a plant-based diet tend to add up to adequate protein. Um, it, incorporating small amounts of animal protein may assist in meeting your protein needs um, and may assist with the transition. So don't avoid animal protein, especially if it's going to help you feel more satisfied. 
but you do need to plan. A lot of times what people do when they move into a plant-based diet is they take you know, a crispy chicken salad that they would get through the drive through and they don't get the chicken and they just get greens basically. And they don't have anything on that salad that's going to be satisfying. So you need to plan for, are you going to add tofu? Are you going to add beans and pumpkin seeds or beans and sunflower seeds to really make sure that you're getting the protein in at each meal? The next question, are plant-based meat substitutes better than animal proteins? In the chat, if you want to throw in, if you've had any of these um, plant-based meat substitutes, like a Beyond Burger, Impossible Burger, Chickenless Nuggets, um, throw in if you've had, an, had them and if you like them. Um, because I bet there's a lot of people out there who have had them um, or think about trying them, maybe just a little scared. That might be me. But there's tons of these products and they've grown in availability a lot through over time. Um, so the answer is yes, in some ways, these can be better choices than animal proteins. But it depends on what you're choosing and what your diet needs are. Um, so plant, what are plant-based proteins? Like where are these, where are these meat substitutes coming from? Especially things like the new burgers, like Beyond Burgers or Impossible Burgers. They look like burgers. They even bleed like burgers. Um, so what are they? That's what I always wonder. Meat substitutes are made from plants and it can include soy, peas, beans, lentils, and wheat gluten um, are often what these are made of or a mix of these ingredients. Um, they can be a good source of fiber, folate and iron, but they're often more processed than their meat counterparts and higher in sodium and or saturated fat, dependent on, on what they are. Um, a lot of the meatless burgers that are new to the market can actually have as much saturated fat as a, as a beef burger. Um, so you want to read the labels and choose items based on your personal health needs. If you need a low sodium diet, you want to be reading for that. If you're watching your fat intake, be sure to read for that as well. Um, and really keep in mind that these are processed foods. So if you, you know, you want to use them in moderation. You also want to practice portion control as a plant-based meat substitute does not give you a pass for all you can eat. They still add up in calories, fat, and salt. So you want to be sure that you're um, practicing portion control and still building that plate with half of it filled with vegetables. And our last frequently asked question is, do I have to go all in on a plant-based diet to reap the benefits? Is it all or nothing? Because we all know that it's hard to do everything perfect all the time, unless you're me. No, I'm kidding. I have trouble keeping to things too. The answer is no, you don't have to be all in. Changes, even as minor as adding an additional serving of fruits or vegetables or changing the whole grain bread can provide benefits. That's why I encourage that you start small and build on those changes. Um, so tips is are to find the right balance of a plant-based diet that fits your needs. Assess where you are now. If you're someone who eats just meat and a potato at dinner or just meat, then you want to think, how do I go from where I am to building in some plant-based principles? Be reasonable about the direction you're able to move in immediately. Um, and don't push too many changes at once because we really want you to be able to stick to this. Um, and again, start with small achievable changes. Before we go into the question and answer period, um, I just wanted to highlight our featured recipe of the month. Um, don't knock it till you try it, lentil walnut bolognese with spaghetti. What's nice about things like um, bolognese or sloppy joe is that they're very familiar foods that people are comfortable with. So you putting a plant-based spin on them can help people who are a little skeptical to be one, able to embrace it more easily. And so um, I hope that you give this recipe a try. And if you have tried it and you have any feedback, I'd be happy to see it in the chat as well. Um, but definitely a, 
a item to try and it gets its meaty texture from the lentils and the walnuts, which you'll see as you ex explore plant-based eating, walnuts are used a lot and lentils as well as a meat substitute, as a more natural meat substitute. And then before we open up for questions, I just wanted to um, encourage you to attend our next session where Susie will be, I believe, joining us at her grill to make Mediterranean portobello mushroom burgers um, on Tuesday, July 19th at 12 o'clock Eastern time. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. And I think we have just a few minutes for questions, Caitlin. Awesome. Great job, Valerie. Thank I you. love that you touched on the lentils and the walnuts. Some of my favorite recipes are the lentil sloppy joes, uh, lentil bolognese. And then we made like a lentil and walnut meatloaf one year for Christmas. Mm. That was divine. So definitely really great meat substitutes. Yes. And Very common, delicious. like relatable, you know, people mm -hmm. know what they are. Yes. Yeah. So we do have a couple questions. So the first one is kind of on that list of the different plant-based protein soy sources, soy protein was on there. Is soy protein safe to eat? Um, both in like the setting of patients going through cancer treatments, as well as just in normal people. That's a great question. There's a lot of mixed opinions on soy. Um, and really what I tell, tell my patients when I speak with them is soy is safe. But what we recommend is going with what we call whole soy foods. So things like tofu, edamame, or green soybeans, um, and soy milk, um, and tempeh. And avoiding processed soy. So um, like soy chips, soy protein isolate where it's been processed and concentrated, that tends to be where we get concerned. But your whole soy foods are found to have many benefits um, and recommended safe up to two servings per day. Do you have to eat soy foods or is it optional? It is optional. You do not have to eat soy foods. Don't tell the dietitian um, police, but I do not like tofu. Do not give me tofu. Don't tell me I'm gonna love it. I'm not gonna love it. Um, and that's okay. There's lots of other um, plant-based protein options out there like beans. I'd be happy to eat beans or peanut butter any day of the week. So you don't have to incorporate soy. It's not required. Um, and if you're not sure you um, how you like the taste of it, I think edamame are a really great place to start with soy, um, especially if you like like beans and um peas and things like that, or lima beans, they're really tasty um, and a great appetizer or a great easy side dish. I also am not a big tofu fan. So again, um, we will not tell the dietitian police, but there is one recipe that I will send to you and it is the only way that I found that I'll like it. So I'll send that to you and we'll see if we can change your mind. Yeah, we'll, we'll see that I'll report form. back. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> um, one last question. So um, are fruits or vegetables better for me to be eating? So. That's a great question. Vegetables, it's better to go higher on your vegetable intake than your fruit intake. And that is because your non-starchy vegetables, so like your, your greens, your cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, carrots, um, anything that's not starchy, and your starchy are like your potatoes, sweet potatoes, corn, peas, and winter squash. Um, any of your non-starchy vegetables, they're very low calorie, like 20 calories per serving. And some people say that you burn more calories digesting it than you do eat it, than you do what's in there. Um, so those add up in calories very slowly. So you can get a lot of bang for your buck. Fruit still is low in calories compared to like cookies and a lot of other foods we eat, but um, is higher in calories and adds up more quickly. So eating fruit with abandon could add up to more calories. So we encourage doing more um, like five to nine servings of vegetables. If you can, I know that's a lot work up and then maybe like three to four servings of fruit a day um, is kind of your breakout. Wonderful. Well, I think that takes care of our questions. So that very good job answering them and great job with the presentation and outlining demystifying the plant-based diet. I think you did an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.